For today's Monday makeup lesson, I'm going to go into a lot more detail than I usually do. So I hope that you guys enjoy this and let's get started. Prepping the canvas. So I like to start off by creating a little bit more framework and creating a clear canvas for me to work on. And this helps me see the end result just that little bit clearer with every step that I do, but it also creates a framework for me to work off so I can see the shapes that I'm trying to create. So you want to start off from this point rather than this one. So how do you do that? So I start off by applying my moisturizer all over my face, including around the eye area. I apply a very sheer amount of concealer or foundation around the eye area and the eyebrows. Now I only apply a sheer amount because if I need to, I can always just cleanse this away. But a sheer amount creates a blank canvas for me to work off. And I also fill in my brows. Now, brows are really personal, so I'm not gonna tell you what to do, but what I like to do is just darken from the center out, making sure that this is nice and deep and filled in. And then just on the inside of the brows, I use whatever's left over in the brush to create some fine little hairs. And now we can see our eye shape, just that little bit clearer, our brows are filled in, and we're ready to apply our eyeshadow. You might be wondering why I don't just do my entire face. Well, it's kind of personal preference. For me, I find I get enough framework from just filling in my brows and I can really see the shape that I'm creating by applying a small amount of concealer just around the eyes, which I can then clean up if I have any liner mistakes or fallout. And it's not gonna mess up an entire beautiful face of makeup, but it is personal preference. Preparing the eyelids. So why do you need to prep the eyelids? Surely eyeshadow that's designed for the eyes should just be able to go onto the lids. Well, the eyelids are actually really thin and delicate and sheer, and makeup doesn't hold on to thin, delicate areas of skin compared to other areas of the face or body. That's why when you swatch something on say your wrist or your fingertips, it looks a lot more vibrant compared to when it's applied onto the lids. The eyeshadows need something to hold on to. So there's three different things that you can try. Concealer, this is great because you probably already have a concealer and you can just apply this onto the lids. Primer, which is designed for the actual lids itself and will really hold on to eyeshadow. And cream eyeshadows. These are a cream form of an eyeshadow and they really create a nice base for the rest of your shadows to sit on top of. My personal preference is to mix concealer with my primer. So I use it at about a two to one ratio because my eyelids are kind of dry. Eyeshadow primers can be quite drying on the lids, and if you already have dry skin, it creates unwanted texture. So shearing it off with a little bit of concealer will create a nice base. And this is something that I do for mature skin as well. However, you wanna mix it up to make sure it works for you. For the oilier lids or people that find their eyeshadows just does not stick and stay on, you might wanna use more eyeshadow primer than concealer. Once you apply the primer or concealer, you might find it's kind of damp and sticky before it sets. That's actually totally normal. And this can actually help in your application. The sticky damp base will grab hold of the powder like nothing else. So if you're doing a smoky eye or a very colorful look, a sticky base will really help you. However, it does make blending a little bit more difficult. So for beginners, I would actually recommend applying a sheer amount of a neutral eyeshadow over the base to make sure it's a soft powdery effect. Don't worry, your shadows will still hold on to this base. It'll just make the blending process so much easier. Parts of the eye. So the main part of the eye is clearly the lid, and this can be separated into three or four different sections. And then you have your crease. This is where your lid creases into your eye shape. And then you have your brow bone. This is not technically the brow bone because the brow bone is lower than this, but it actually refers to the little area just underneath your brows. Your crease area is probably the most important. A lot of people refer to the crease as just this one line. It's actually not. The best way to think about it is any area above this point, but stopping underneath the brow bone or the little area underneath the brows. And when you're blending, you really just wanna stay within these points. Now this looks really complicated. I promise you it's not. When you're applying eyeshadows, you want to keep them within these imaginary points. Using the edge of the nose, edge of the eye, and the edge of the brow, you create an imaginary line. This is the stopping point for most blending. And then for that inner part of the eye, you basically want to create a parallel line that stops beyond the tear duct. 
This is all about keeping your blend within these two points. Picking eyeshadows. So how many eyeshadows do you actually need to create an eye makeup look? Well, for any basic look, you only need three things. A light, a medium, and a dark. So your light color is at least one shade lighter than your skin tone, but can be like four or five or six shades lighter. Depends on the look that you're creating. Then you have your darker shade, which should be at least one shade darker, but can be anywhere up to four or five or six shades darker. And then you have your medium shade. So this is somewhere in between your light and your dark. It's almost as if you mix your light and dark together, then you get your medium shade. And it doesn't have to just be with neutrals. This also works with say colors like purple. We have a light purple, a dark purple, and a medium purple. However, the medium shade can actually be swapped out for more of a neutral color. So this color here is still in between these, but it's just a little bit more muted and neutral because it's a light pink instead of a purple. And these shadows are often referred to as the highlight, the midtone or transition shade, and the contour. So the highlight shade is basically what it is. It's a highlight, so it's a light. You also have your contour, which we all know is for deepening and darkening something, so that's your dark. And then you have your midtone, or as a lot of YouTubers refer to this as a transition shade. Personally, I feel like that's a good term to use, but I like to use midtone because I feel like it's a better explanation of exactly what this transition shade is. It's a middle tone. It's in between our light and our dark, but you will hear a lot of people refer to this as a transition shade. Makeup brushes. There's really only a few makeup brushes that you need. The most important being a good blending brush. This is gonna create that soft blended appearance. A small brush, something like a pencil brush or anything that's nice and small that you can do some detailed work with. This is actually my favorite one for beginners, the Blank Canvas E01. Highly recommend it because it really applies the shadow while keeping it nice and soft and blended at the same time. So it does a lot of the work for you. And then you have a flat brush. It's not essential to use a flat brush. You can use your fingertips, a Q-tip. However, you will get more precision from a flat brush. And then you have a clean blending brush. This is an extra one that I would actually recommend for beginners. This will create that soft blended appearance and stop your shadows from getting muddy. Have you ever gone back in with your blending brush after you've used it to apply an eyeshadow and then everything just kind of blurs together? Well, using a clean blending brush will soften out any harsh lines without disturbing the makeup that you've already applied. Framing the lid, applying your midtone. So we're gonna start off with our midtone. Finding your midtone is actually really important, but I do have a little bit of a trick. Use your favorite nude lipstick as a guide. So if you're creating a makeup look and you know that you're gonna use a pink nude, try using that in an eyeshadow form as your transition shade. Nine times out of 10, it will definitely work. Now to apply this, I'm gonna be using my blending brush. I like to make sure this is soft and blended, so that's why we're using this type of brush. We're gonna start by applying this on the outer edge to start with, and then blending it over and back. Wherever you place the brush first is where you will get the concentration of color. So when we're applying dark shadows, we wanna start on the outer edge and then blend over and back. Anytime we pick up some shadow, we start on the outer edge again. And then you can sweep this over and back in what's referred to as a windscreen wiper motion. But really it's just moving the brush over and back using the shape of your eye as your guide, blending upwards towards the brow bone. By the time it gets to the brow bone, it should be nice and sheer, with the concentration of the color being in the crease area. Just make sure it's nice and soft and blended. That's the most important thing with a midtone. Also, keep an eye on your blending. Make sure that you are staying in between these two parallel imaginary lines. Adding depth. Taking our contour shade or our dark shade, we're going to apply this with a small brush. Whenever I'm applying dark shadows, I like to use something that I have most control over. And the smaller the brush, the more control you're gonna have. So taking that dark shadow, we're gonna apply this on the outer edge of the eye. And I want you to basically stamp this and press this on the outer third of the lid. Really making sure to get right by those lashes and then slightly into the crease. Now, when I say to get deep in the crease, I mean nice and low. So we're applying the shadow in this sort of moon shape. Once we've done it in this area, we can use whatever's left over in the brush to softly blend this out. 
but your midtone is always higher than your contour. Always. So make sure you keep this nice dark shadow lower than this line here. Then you want to take your blending brush and you're going to soften this out. Now I'm not using my clean blending brush this time because the clean blending brush isn't needed. We have a little bit of mid-tone on this brush and this will soften out our contour for us. When you're blending any of your darker eyeshadows, if you don't want them to go up too high, you want to keep your hand high. So the higher your hand, the lower the blend's going to be. It should be coming slightly straighter on to the actual eye shape. And then I'm going to softly blend this over and back. And this will prevent those bristles from going up too high and blending up past the mid-tone. Keeping that nice dark shadow lower than this imaginary line. And when you're blending, you're barely touching the skin. It's all about letting the bristles off the brush do all the work. But remember your blending points, keeping your shadows in between these two imaginary points. Faking a pro finish. So now we are gonna take our clean blending brush, the one that we have not used for anything else, and we're going to apply our fade shade. What's a fade shade? It's actually a shadow that I kind of invented. It's similar to your mid-tone, but usually is a slightly different tone, maybe a little bit more vibrant. And I often use the blush that I'm going to apply. The reason I use this is because it really softens out any harsh lines. 